The first group that attempted to go up Mount Kailash, went missing. The next group after them, started to age, as they climbed up. They stopped climbing, but still died of old age, despite being very young. Some scientists also attempted to scale the mountain, and aged two weeks in six hours. What is wrong with this mountain? Why are there strange things happening around it? Hi, welcome back to Mysteries and Facts, and today we will be taking a look at the mystery surrounding, Mount Kailash. On this planet, you will find many mountains. Some are popular for their height, others for their climate, some for their beauty, and others for the religious and mystical elements that surround them. Mount Kailash, on the other hand is an embodiment of all these. The mountain sits at an altitude of 6,638 meters, in the Tibet Plateau region of China, hosting thousands of people every year. This ranges from pilgrims on a holy journey, to tourists seeking to have thrill. But then again, this happens with most mountains. So, what makes this one so special? Let's start with the fact that, despite the thousands of visits to the mountain every year, nobody has been able to climb to its summit. Yes, you heard right, no one. Is it taller than Everest? Certainly not. Then why is this? This is where things get a bit tricky. It's not that nobody has tried to scale the mountain and get to the summit, it's that all who have tried have failed. Everest is at least 33% taller than Kailash, but more than 9,000 people have successfully reached its summit. The same can't be said for Kailash, not only have people failed to reach the summit, but those who have attempted have reported having strange experiences. For example, some Russian climbers tried to scale the mountain in the early 20th century, only to end up disappearing without a trace. No one knows where they went, or what happened to them. Some Siberian climbers also attempted to scale the mountain despite the previous incidents recorded on it, and they ended up experiencing something no one who had climbed a mountain had ever experienced. They aged as they climbed higher, fearing for their lives. They had to call off their expedition. There was no logical explanation as to why they were aging, and they never found an explanation when they came back. But guess what? They all later died of old age despite being biologically young. If these were the only ones, we could have called it considered it a coincidence, or a rather odd situation. But, many who visited the mountain after also described experiencing similar things. Some had their nails and hair grow as they scaled the mountain. One team recorded at least two weeks of growth in less than 12 hours of climbing the mountain. A team of researchers went up to Mount Kailash to confirm the phenomenon, and they also experienced the same. They concluded that the air around the mountain increased the rate of aging, which is why all who went up the mountain suddenly started aging. If that's not weird, I don't know what is. The next mystery of this mountain has to do with its positioning. It is located exactly 6,666 kilometers from the North Pole, and 13,332 kilometers from the South Pole, which is exactly twice its distance from the North. There is no way this is just an odd coincidence. And that's not all. There are some who believe that Mount Kailash is not at all a mountain, but a massive pyramid built by an ancient and advanced race. There are some within that sect that actually believe that it is related to the pyramids of Giza and Quixote. This is tied in with another theory by some scientists that the genesis of all human life and civilization could be traced back to Kailash. The Russian explorer, Dr. Ernst Moll, who had the opportunity to study Mount Kailash in 1999 is one such. He and his team created a schematic map of the city of gods consisting of pyramids and stone mirrors, and it produced something rather interesting and odd. The result of the scheme was very similar to the spatial structure of DNA molecules. He and his team concluded that there was no way this was some random coincidence. Dr. Ernst Moll also came concluded that Mount Kailash is a man-made pyramid. He even dared to add that the mountain is possibly hollow with people inside. He made this assertion because of the noise he and his team heard coming from within the mountain at night during their study there. Another weird thing with the area is the high magnetic field present. A compass is useless in this region, as it is not able to point to the true north and will just flutter while on the mountain. This might explain why someone might get lost in the place. The high magnetic activity also makes it impossible to fly helicopters and drones in the area. Fun fact! Adolf Hitler believed these things and sent multiple teams to excavate and find the secrets of the mountain. He however was not interested in learning about history. He held the belief that if a civilization could build what we see, then it most likely have some weapons of mass destruction lying around and he wanted them for his vendetta. Although, multiple scientists agree that there is something weird and mysterious about mountain Kailash, they don't have answers or explanations for them. In such times, 
it is wise to turn to ancient texts and religions, given the fact that they have been here much longer and have records that predate anything modern science has. If you are enjoying this video and haven't hit the like and subscribe buttons already, this will be a good time to do so. Rarely do you find many religions agreeing on the same thing concerning a place or person, but the story is different when it comes to Mount Kailash, and that in itself is another mystery. In Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and Bon religion, this mountain is considered sacred and a place of the gods. But although they all believe that the mountain is sacred, there are slight variations to their beliefs. The Hindus believe it is the stairway or gateway to heaven. There's also the belief that Lord Shiva resides there along with the goddess Parvati and their children Ganesha and Kartikeya. It is recorded in the epic Ramayana that Ravana, the multi-headed demon king of Lanka, had attempted to remove Mount Kailash as a sign of retaliation to Lord Shiva. His ploy however failed, as Lord Shiva was simply too powerful for him. Lord Shiva simply pressed the big toe on his right foot on the mountain and that trapped Ravana there. Although we agree that no one in modern times has ever ascended to the summit of the mountain, Hindu traditions, the epic Mahabharata, to be precise state that the Pandava brothers attempted the journey to the top of Mount Kailash, with their wife Draupadi, on their path to liberation or to attain moksha. On their way, everyone slipped with the exception of Yudhisthira who the door of heaven opened for. The Buddhists also agree it's a sacred place, albeit, they have a slightly different name for it. They call it Mount Meru. To them, Mount Kailash or Mount Meru, is the home of Buddha Kakrasambara who represents extreme bliss. The Bon religion which is native to Tibet calls it the nine-story swastika mountain. They believe the mountain connects the earth and the heavens. The native Bon religion, however does share a rather interesting story with the Buddhists. It is said that the champion of the native Bon religion, Nara Banchung was challenged by a Buddhist champion by the name Milarepa, of, Varayana, to a sorcerer's battle. Yes, you heard right, a sorcerer's battle. Historical records say that the battle was so fierce, and both champions so evenly matched, that no one had a decisive advantage. Without any way to settle the match, it was decided that whoever climbed to the summit of Kailash fastest will be the winner of the battle. Once the battle started, Nara Banchung took to the skies on a magic drum, but Milarepa just sat still meditating. Once Nara Banchung was almost at the summit, Milarepa overtook him riding on sunlight. On Mount Kailash being a pyramid, Mohan Bhatt, a Sanskrit scholar based in Mumbai, agreed with this assertion quoting that the Ramayana also refers to the sacred mountain as a pyramid, with references in the Vedas as well. The ancient texts he referred to considered Mount Kailash as a cosmic axis. He asserted that there might have existed a more advanced ancient civilization that might have built them. Dr. Muldash agrees with this assertion, and added that the pyramids might be connected to Giza and Teotihuacan. This points to the fact that Hindus also believed that the sacred mountain of Kailash could be a pyramid. The Tibetan Lamas and monks had ancient documents, that agreed that Mount Kailash had Shambhala, the city of the gods, underneath it. This city was not inhabited by mere men, a more advanced species. If this is to be believed, then the Russian researcher, Dr. Ernst Moll, who believed the mountain could be hollow could actually be right. Aside from all these, the mountain has two lakes whose existence has baffled scientists to this day, but not so much the religious sects. Both of these lakes are very distinct. Manizaravar is a freshwater lake and Rakshastal is a saltwater lake. Just in case you didn't know, it's very unusual, or rather quite impossible, for a freshwater lake to exist next to a saltwater lake, especially in a saline environment like the Tibetan Plateau. If it were just Rakshastal, it would not be so weird, as the environment is naturally suited for it. But the fact that Manezaravar is fresh and devoid of salt is a mystery. While science has no answers, the ancient religions and religious texts do have an explanation for how these two lakes with such polar differences could coexist. It is believed that it was created in the mind of Brahma G. Aside from that, the Devadas take a bath in it at the Brahma, Muhurta, till this day. Mansarovar is associated with holiness, and its shape is attributed to the sun. Rakshastal is associated with the negative energies of the earth, and its shape is attributed to the moon. It is believed that Rakshastal is the result of Ravana's rebellion. The Om, found in the Hindu religion, mystically embodies the essence of the entire universe, and this is found etched in the disposition of snow on Mount Kailash. It's also easy to hear the sound of Damru or Om while in the region. While it's easy to think it's a coincidence, it's not logical to think it's a coincidence among all the coincidences listed here. As awesome as all these sound, can you attempt to climb Mount Kailash today? As much as I'd love to tell the daredevil within you, 
that you could try to be the first person to reach the summit in our modern time, you couldn't even do it, if you had what it takes. The Chinese government banned climbing the mountain for some unknown reason in 1980. They use respect for the religions of others as an alibi, but if we know anything, we know that China has little to no respect for other religions from other countries. All the religions mentioned, do agree that there is something supernatural, and also agree that all who have climbed it have done so by supernatural means. This might explain, why nobody in recent times has been able to, since it has been about wit, grit, science and equipment. But, spiritually speaking, you could still climb it if you are worthy. The locals believe that, only a soul free of sin could go up the mountain. Such an individual will not even have to physically climb as he would simply turn into a bird and fly to the summit. Wild right? But if you do believe you are free of sin, you are welcome to try. So, what do you think? Do you believe that there is more to Mount Kailash? Or do you simply think, we are making a big deal out of nothing? Share with us in the comments section. And while you are at it, do not forget to like this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. Thanks for staying with us. See you in the next video.